So I had an experience recently that made me think of a very old anime. An anime from my childhood. An anime that I love quite dearly, to be frank. And this anime is Gaiba. <laughs> Anyway, to the point. So I was cruising online looking for some cheap anime figures. Why? Because I'm cheap and I'm broke. And I thought, why not look for some Gaiva figures? That's an old anime. I mean, The Over was released in like 1989, which was the original that I watched, which to be fair was the English dub. So I figured surely I could find some decent figures of that anime considering it's like one of my favorites. And every single one of those figures was well within $100. Like 70 US all the way up to two, 300 US. Nani? I can't afford that, which deeply saddened me to a degree, <laughs> but it got me thinking about something, which is how good that series actually is, and it's kind of a sleeping giant. And what I mean by that is that it's rarely brought up amongst Anitubers, at least from what I've seen. But then of course the arguments come up, which version are you talking about, the 2005 reboot, or are you talking about the overs? And here's the thing, to me it really comes down to what you're looking for in the Gaiva series, because to be fair, the 2005 version did some things better, and the overs did some things so much better that, to be honest, it's still kind of my preferred version. And it was funny to see how many people actually had the same origin story, if you will, with discovering Guyver as I did. I thought I was one of the few. No, apparently it's a very, very common story, which is this old anime was often the first violent anime that kids ran into by being able to enter and worship at the feet of Blockbuster, which is an ancient institution which some of you may not know even existed. And it's quite funny because I don't know if it's the same with everyone else who borrowed it from Blockbuster, but it was, I always thought it was ironic that it was like right next to the section which was like kids cartoons, where you would find like all your Disney stuff, then you'd go to like this Japanese section and it would have like Japanese and anime I think, and it would have like all the Pokemon, Digimon, and then up in the top right corner there was like Gaiva and like some damn near hentai shit. I'm guessing people just didn't think that, you know, right next to the kids section you probably shouldn't be putting Gaiva. Which let's be honest, the original Overs is, you kids shouldn't probably watch that. I did at the age of nine, I think I turned out okay. Some would argue probably not. So just a quick rundown on what is Gaiva. Gaiva is a manga series that was released in 1985. It was written by Yoshiki Takaya. Even though technically it could come under the category of shonen, even 12 or 13, it might be a bit much for today's standards. Back in the day, it was fine. Put it this way, when it was released here in Australia and I rented it from Blockbuster, it was rated R18, I'm pretty sure. And I know what you're thinking, but you said you watched it when you were like eight. And then you said it's R18. How is that possible? Well, you gotta remember this was the early 2000s. And back then we didn't have Karens and we didn't nerf the world. So you could literally walk up to the counter and the guy might be like, uh, hey, this says R18. Oh, come on. Yeah, all right. And it was as easy as that. Nowadays, if someone did that, they'd be a oh, whore. Think of the children. And basically the premise is, Sho is a high school kid. He happens to be out in the forest one day and he comes across this mechanism. This thing is the Gaiva unit. And the Gaiva unit is technically just a weapon. It's a weaponized suit that binds to a person. So anyway, eventually this manga gets created into an over, which is an original video animation. So it did not air on TV, at least that's what I believe. And a fun fact, I had no idea about this. Did you know the manga series is still going on till today? And God, I wish I read Japanese because I would love to own that whole collection and read from start to finish because I fucking love Gaiva. And basically it's an action adventure slash in my opinion, sort of in a weird way, horror slash psychological horror themed anime. The whole premise is basically that this kid gets thrown into this world of conspiracy, uh, of just horrific trauma and danger, where he can't trust anyone. An insane corporation of monsters is involved, which is Kronos, and the monsters are known as Zoinoids, and Kronos are basically trying to take over the world. They're basically the Illuminati. And Sho at first just wants to carry out his life as normal until he realizes that's not going to happen because the Gyve unit's on him and their plan is to get the Gyve unit off him, even if that means killing him and killing everyone around him. And that's one of the things that I think is really, really cool about the series is that it's very multi-layered. Like this, it's not like a, a lot of anime that you see where all of a sudden the hero has this power and he decides, I have to do something to change the world. No, you actually see that show very, very quickly just goes, well, I'm just going to try to live my, my normal day-to-day -day life and just hopefully this doesn't affect it. 
And it's the circumstances of everything around him that drag him in to the danger. And it's not just completely action-based. They actually delve into the psychological trauma of imagine being just your regular, normal, everyday school kid. And then all of a sudden you're a weapon. Like, and everyone's out to get you. And anyone you come in contact with, whether friends or family, you're putting them in danger. Kronos very, very quickly makes it clear to show and his friends, they don't give a fuck about, oh, we might expose ourselves because they know how much power and influence they have. And they know very, very quickly how they can wrap things up and sweep it under the rug. So they'll do crazy shit like attack a fucking school or just completely destroy an office. Which of course leads Show down this paranoid route of I can't trust anyone, I can't even, even if I do trust them, I can't show it to them because it may put their lives at risk. Now here's the thing, the over was fantastic because it's dark. It has one of the best scores in my opinion when it comes to music. Even though yes it is kind of old school and kind of dated, I still get such a nostalgia hit out of it and it's still epic. And the fact that the colors, because it was the 80s, were a little bit more muted than the more vibrant anime you see today, it does add to the dark, gloomy world that Sho kind of enters into. Where he can't just be a school kid anymore. Where his life is kind of ruined. Where he realizes that every time he puts on that Giva suit, something terrible might happen. Because a catch-22 of putting on the Giva suit is, yes, it gives you the power to fight. Yes, you are this unbelievable fighting machine. But you're also putting yourself in danger because now you're going to engage with a monster that could tear you up. And he gets fucked up a lot. Which of course is compounding more trauma. Because imagine being terrified knowing that any fight you enter into you could die. So Sho is very well aware of that because again, things happen in the series that make it very very clear to him that every time he puts on that Giver suit, it might not end very well. So there's that compounding trauma of... People want this weapon. I am this weapon. The only way I can defend myself and my friends is to use this weapon. But every time I use this weapon, I put my friends in danger. The other cool thing I like about this show as well is that because the OVA was released in the 80s and early 90s, it doesn't pull any punches. There's swearing. There's nudity. There's a fair amount of blood and gore. And like I said, for a lot of people, this was their first introduction to like violent anime that was adult themed. It wasn't... Pokemon, it wasn't Digimon. I went from watching Gaiva to Akira, and those were like the two anime that kind of got me going, wow, there's a whole world of anime out there that is not just, you know, kid stuff. But let's get to the meat of this video, which is what happens after. So here's the thing, Gaiva was pretty popular for its time because basically it did make its way to the West. Like I said, there were people like me who just found it on the shelf in Blockbuster. Anyway, because of the popularity that it did get to enjoy for a period of time, there, it developed very much a cult following. Meaning there are lots of anime fans that have never heard of Gaiva because it's not like, you know, Dragon Ball where it's super mainstream. It's not even Akira super mainstream level. Gaiva kinda was still a little bit more underground in terms because of those, those types of anime made it so big that West East, everyone had heard of it. If you got into anime only recently, you would have heard of these things. But unlikely, most people have heard of Gaiva. Unless, of course, you're an old school anime fan or you were like me and you managed to find it when you were really young, grew obsessed with it, and then just, you know, it went away. Speed up to 2005. It gets a reboot. Now, here's the thing. The reboot did a lot of things well. And what I mean by that is that it definitely upped the animation. Like, there was actually length to these fight scenes that kind of made it more fun. Because for all the things I love about the over, the fight scenes, because it was in the 80s and the early 90s, the animations weren't that great. And not to mention, it didn't have, like, a movie budget. They would, they would often recycle some clips, and the fight scenes could be somewhat basic. But the one thing that the over had over the reboot, and this is why I'm bringing it up now, is that the over had real brutality in it. And, I, and it's the thing that I think made Gaiva special. Because yes, there is blood in the reboot. There is a certain element of, I suppose you could say, gore, kind of? Not for not a ton, but I mean, yeah, arms and stuff can come off and this sort of thing. Because that's a big part of what made Gaiva Gaiva was, you know, the, the blood and the gore. But the over really took into account, hey... This would be traumatizing for a high school kid to go through every day, dismembering people and, and knowing that these are people. They're not just monsters. They are people that turn into monsters, but they are people. And knowing that his arm might come off or that he may be shot straight through the chest and he's going to just have to fucking deal with it. And they, they made a point of showing the blood and the bone. And, and one of my favorite scenes ever 
in my opinion, is it's 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 what it was the first thing that made me go like, oh damn, was the scene when Guyver locks hands, old school wrestling style, with a big Zoinoid known as Gregor, and basically bends Gregor's hands back and just breaks his wrist. Blood just spurts everywhere. You see the two bones go pop, pop. It's it's tremendous. It's the best. The reboot doesn't have a lot of that. Yes, the fights are a little bit more animated and they move around a bit more, but it's it's lost that that thing that made Gaiva fight so exciting, which is, you know, the brutality of it. I feel like it's lost that darkness that the over had. Not to mention the sound, uh, the score wasn't nearly as good. I'm sorry, but maybe this, I watched the dub, obviously, because I watched it on VHS, so it was the, the English translation. But I'm telling you, it had one of the best opening sequences ever. I shit you not, I still put this up as one of the best opening sequences in anime history. And yes, some of the voice acting isn't the best, because it is from the 80s and they didn't have a great budget. But it was serviceable. The The musical score was fantastic in my opinion. Like, I love it. The the little cues, the, the, the theme song, whenever Gaiva was really, you know, starting to do some inspirational shit. It was all kind of lost in the reboot a little bit. And I think it's because of the fact that the colors are so vibrant and, and everything looks so nice that the grimness, the, the, the in a weird way, kind of eerie feeling of when something would happen, or even when the Gaiva was doing cool shit, you almost become like afraid of the Gaiva at points in time because you're like, yeah, this is a terrifying like like bio weapon. And I think that the Over did a great job of displaying how the Gaiva suit is both a gift and a curse. I think the reboot didn't really. I mean, it does do it, but not as well as the Over. The Over handled it perfectly to the point of where, and I'm someone who's always like, yeah, give me the superpowers. I don't give a shit. If someone said, do you want the Gaiva suit, but Kronos is real, all these things are real, and they will come for you, I'd be like, nah, I'm good. And I think that's how the Over really portrayed it, like, in such a good way of, it's a, it's a fucking curse. And this is a filmmaking thing, it's all about the atmosphere you build. The reboot, because it aired on TV, and I think because they rebooted it in a way that they wanted to be, they wanted to, I think they wanted to make it more mainstream. They took out a lot of those darker elements, a lot of those creepier elements, and a lot of those depressing elements. And for the most part, those were the things I actually really liked about the over. That being said though, one thing that the reboot did really really well is it told a lot more of the story. The over only tells up to a certain point. The actual reboot tells a significant part, obviously not all because the manga's still going, and to be fair, the, the reboot I think only covers like the first main if you will, saga, I suppose you could say is the correct word. I don't know. But the other cool thing about the reboot is that it is truer to the manga, at least in story development ways. Because yes, the over included some bits and pieces in there that weren't a part of the manga, which is ironic considering the over is only 12 episodes. And they, I guess they decided, ah, I'll throw this in there. But to be fair, I loved it. I fucking loved it. I think they did a great job. But all things considered, and to be honest, I, I'm not even sure what the point of this video is. I just wanted to talk about it is that I really wished they had somehow come to a middle ground. But it was unfortunate that I feel like in updating the Gaiva series, they made it maybe a bit too vibrant. I mean, there are a lot of anime out there that are done with new technology and all that, but they still managed to keep that dull look. And I think that's what suited Gaiva best. Even even just a little bit, just, just turn down the vibrancy a little bit. You know what I mean? It's, at times it's, it looked almost like the coloring was done by someone who did Pokemon. It was very vibrant. And I think that's not the point of Gaiva here. I wish they had kept the score, but updated it a bit. They did kind of, I'm not going to spoil that again. If you want to get into it, watch it. Because I'm, I'm, to be honest, this is kind of a suggestion video. I'm telling people go watch the over and then go watch the reboot. And look, at the end of the day, you might watch it and say, hey, it's not as great as you said it is. You may even turn around and say, you know what? It was kind of shit. And at the end of the day, you know what? I might punch your grandma in the tit. These things happen. I'm joking, but seriously, I love this anime. The general concept alone is so deeply layered because it's all about conspiracy. The world's fucked. This kid's life's fucked. He's gonna try and struggle anyway. He keeps running into hurdles. Bad things are happening to him. And there's some pretty traumatic shit that happens in this show that will make you go like, wow, like, that would, yeah, I could see how that would fuck up anyone. It's hard to not like the reboot because it's basically like take something you love, reboot it, make it presentable and serviceable to the point of where I would never say the reboot was bad because it gives more and it and it does some things better. It just doesn't have the same magic. 
that I or, or at least the same essence that the overs had that I wish it did I really really to God wish it did because if it did I would I would till today hands down say it's my favorite number one anime nothing else touches it but all I'm gonna say is if you enjoy like creepy or dark or even just an anime that has a cool concept that is pretty deeply layered when it comes to various themes like trauma like action to some level psychological horror or hell even if you want to watch something i suppose you could say that's kind of like a thriller and all these other kind of things clump together in one anime go ahead and check out the original over then if you want go ahead and watch the reboot and they're not super long series like i said the over is 12 episodes the reboot's like i don't know is it like 50 or something I i'm not even sure it's been a while since i've watched these but overall they're fucking good generally okay the over in my opinion i think has a bit more magic to it you might even like it I will admit it's dated, but personally, I think it's fucking amazing. Anyway, weird video to make. I have no idea. Like I said, I felt lost making this video because I was like, where am I kind of going with this? Doesn't matter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video. And, uh, yeah, if there's any other anime you want me to talk about or check out or anything and give a review or, or a talk on, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Enjoy your night or day, whatever's over there. Take it easy, guys. And girls, peace out.